There is one hot topic now. You Google Jade Helm 15 and you are flooded with different things about this exercise. I searched around to try to find something that we could put up here and discuss and, and show about it. This is a pretty complete um, rundown of it in this article here. <clears throat> Those that haven't known about it yet, they're going to conduct some exercises beginning in July. We'll even run it through September. Some say they've already began in Florida. Okay, so let's go. This is what it is. They have compiled several states. I think there's nine. There were seven. I think they added Mississippi and Florida to the list. It made, makes nine. And they're going to have exercises with uh, all different kinds of things, all different types of military personnel. There's going to be a lot of nighttime movement, <clears throat> noise, strange things, what have you. Um, you hear martial law practice linked in with these exercises, all kinds of things. It's a major unconventional warfare going to be held across seven states. I believe two more has been added since this article. Um, 1,200 plus people deployed in Texas. Going to be a bunch of different live players. It's focusing on irregular warfare. Conventional forces like special forces. Special operations, of course, are are trained and uh, very skilled, that's to say the least. Uh, you believe you're going to have 82nd Airborne, you're going to have four different branches of the military. And this is uh, this map, and the colors designate friendly, hostile, leaning, you know, whatever they, they want to term you as. So there's been chatter about Utah and Texas being labeled hostile. <clears throat> so in this little war game, this is what they have been designated as. Unconventional warfare, specific meaning in military doctrine, a special discipline of irregular warfare, which encompasses multiple forms of operation conducted mainly by special forces. Irregular warfare can include any relevant DOD activity and operations such as counterterrorism, unconventional warfare, foreign internal defense, counterinsurgency, and stability operations that, in the context of <clears throat> IW, involving establishing or reestablishing order in a fragile state or territory, establishing or reestablishing order, unconventional warfare. Activities conducted to enable a resistance movement or insurgency to coerce, disrupt, or overthrow a government or occupying power by operating through or with an underground auxiliary and guerrilla force in a denied area. In other words, unconventional warfare refers specifically to assisting insurgencies in the denied areas of foreign countries. Denied areas are areas to which our forces will not have conventional access, but will have to insert and sustain themselves by unconventional means. The participants who operate in the red areas of the exercise geography will thus be sneaking around as if they're trying to enter unseen, remain unidentified, and assist the local insurgency. <clears throat> uh, local insurgency. You know, that, that could be... Uh, Overthrowing a foreign government, you know, a.k.a. fighting in Ukraine type of a deal. And there's a little photo of some night drops at Fort Hood. Soldiers from Fort Hood exercising Fort Bragg, North Carolina. Live play participants will include Special Ops Command, 
Special Forces of the Military Services, 82nd Airborne, elements of Marine Expeditionary Units, and interagency partners, which refers to other departments and agencies of the federal government, including, reportedly, the FBI and DEA. Now, this person who's writing this article does not seem to think there's anything weird or nefarious about this, given the competency the exercise will work on. public hasn't been given a view of every participant's role. Other military participants will undoubtedly be present anywhere in the exercise field or HQ only in the numbers they would typically muster to support irregular warfare missions. Expect elements of a Marine Expeditionary Unit or the 82nd Airborne to be deployed over the quote border unquote from the red areas, for example, with small contingents in country, in red. It's going to facilitate rapid response operations if necessary. That's just an example. <clears throat> there, there won't be large concentrations of troops anywhere, not for unconventional warfare exercises. So this is going to be like small pockets of them. Maybe a lot of pockets, but they'll be small groups. And right here you can see the document. Request to conduct the realistic military training, J. Tell 15. Commander of the United States Army Special Op Command seeks a written invitation and approval from local officials to conduct realistic military training within their jurisdictions for a joint military exercise, J. Tell 15. What is it? Realistic military training and training conducted outside of federally owned property. The RMT process is designed to ensure proper coordination between DOD representatives and local and regional authorities. The process includes the following measures. Risk assessment, medical and communications plans, MOU, MOA, and licensing agreements, training areas, staging areas, role players, Remember that, role players, legal review, ID of training, staging areas, role players, airfield, drop zones, landing zones, surveys, letters of invitations, obtained from local officials, coordination with local, state, and federal law enforcement, public air affairs review. What is it? A challenging eight-week joint military and interagency unconventional warfare exercise conducted throughout Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, California, Nevada, Utah, and Colorado, with Mississippi and Florida added, I believe. Jade Helm is a U.S. Special Operations Command-sponsored exercise to improve the Special Operations Forces' capability as part of the National Security Strategy. It's going to run from July 15th through September the 15th. And right at the right about that time frame, uh, you're going to be running into the end of the Shemitah year. Yeah, and the fourth blood moon. Amazingly coincidental, is it not? Who and where? U.S. Army Special Forces, Command Green Berets, Navy SEALs, Air Force Special Operations Command. Marine Special Operations Command, Marine Expeditionary Units, 82nd Airborne, Interagency Partners. Exercise locations within Texas is, wow, there's a bunch of them. Bastrop, Smithville, Big Spring, Caddo Lake, Caldwell, Cristobal, College Station, Del City, El Dorado, Goliad Junction, Vicky, Menard, Mountain Home, San Angelo, San Antonio, and Victoria. There's your map. Hostile is red. Why Texas? It gives you some... Uh, they've done a lot of exercise in Texas because Texan, Texans are historically supportive of efforts to prepare the soldiers and the airmen. So they typically back uh, you know, strong defense of the country. At least that's what they're saying in the document. 
there's more there, but let's see what else. And the impact of the area is telling you 1,200 guys throughout Texas. Anticipate minimal physical impact on given area due to the large area of operations. Funding identified for this portion of the exercise will go straight into the economy of supplies, food, fuel, blah, blah, blah. Expect increased military presence, increased aircraft in the area at night, noise complaints. Some individuals may conduct suspicious activities designed to prepare them for complex environments overseas. Local footprint will be 60 to 65 personnel. They may be carrying weapons with supposed blank ammo. And they will be wearing civilian attire and driving civilian vehicles. Some of them may be. Let me give you some safety measures. There's their logo. Master the human domain. Well, think about what that says. Human domain. Don't we all live in the human domain? And there's your contact information. Well, then a lot of the showing of the picture of the military guys walking across the street and you see some people all in a line walking with them and it's said that they escorted them to white vans. People got into white vans and they drove off. It's my contention that that was not a real roundup. It's my contention that those were your role players. Those were your actors playing the part. They knew people was going to see that. They knew people was going to picture that. They knew people was going to put that out. So part of this operation is to see what the, your reaction is going to be. Whether this is really playtime for them to go overseas and, and do these things overseas and practice for it over here remains to be seen. But still there is the possibility that they could be practicing for a roundup or martial law. But who's to say that the people that they're walking to the vans are the dissidents? The people they're walking to the vans may be the ones that they've identified that they can uh, re-educate, that they can re-educate, and they're taking them somewhere to be safe. And the rest of us, they've decided they can't be re-educated, so we're going to be left in the field to be fought with. That's the flip side of the coin possibility. <clears throat> Now, you go down into some different writings that this person has wrote. This is who it is, J.E. Dyer, a retired naval intelligence officer living in Southern Cal. Blogs as the optimistic conservative for domestic tranquility and world peace. She's had articles in Hot Air, Commentaries, Contentions, Pathios, The Daily Caller, The Jewish Press, and The Weekly Standard. So it's a, it's a fairly you know, pretty uh, descriptive article here. So you can come over here yourself and look at it and stuff. Uh, it's probably, I'd say, compiles as much or more complete information as what you would find on the gazillion different uh, websites that have it posted now or any of the videos and stuff. So this is what it is. They're, they're doing an exercise. Whether they're practicing for martial law, that remains to be seen. But don't be freaking out because you've seen the picture of the soldiers walking those people across the street and hearing that they put them in vans and then they disappeared. Those are, those are undoubtedly crisis actors just playing a role. There's nobody that's actually got taken away. Uh, I feel confident of that right now. Well, those are my thoughts on Jade Helm, but what I will say is that things are coming down the road. I just don't believe we've hit the portion of the road where it's actually uh, starting. But we're getting close. So God bless everybody and y'all be safe.